Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. The witching hour. Feeding time for the haints. And I'm caught in the kitchen. This is episode 174, recorded March 24th, 2024. Gruesome Magazine. Feeding time for the hates, and he's caught in the kitchen. What a predicament. My name is Jeff Moore. On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time through 1969. In each episode, we'll discuss the monster spirits, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. Is there some kind of secret sign language going on here? Uh, <laughs> I miss. All right. Uh, first up, something I forgot and I promised to do and I forgot it again. Uh, when Mikey Z, uh, Michael Zatz, hosted, we forgot to mention his Chills and Thrills Facebook group, which just reached 100. So Yay! y'all go and check that out. He's fairly prolific in uh, throwing up uh, details and information about movies he loves and uh, characters etc so chills and thrills facebook group go and check that out thanks mikey v uh with me this week are my incredible co-ghosts first up is not chad hunt oh but hopefully chad will be back soon we're hoping i'm 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 gonna take his temperature here tomorrow (laughs) <laughs> He's got the, the rectal thermometer all cleaned up. <laughs> <The old bastard way. laughs> uh, for now, filling in is Scott Wells, who also has a Facebook page, Saturday Bad Theater, and was a guest host on Decades for the 1980s with Queen of Black Magic, which was a crazy, mm. crazy Indonesian film. Uh, so, Scott, how you doing? Um. I'm uh, I am a zombie. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know my name. <laughs> where where I is or anything? Okay. Yep. Uh, glad to have you here again, Scott. Well, I I do. Uh, uh, Scott, uh, don't anybody feel bad because Scott's been invited twice, but I knew he was a little more of a classic era guy. That's most of his posts had to do with classic era stuff, and so. Mm-hmm. Um, we thought, well, we got an extra spot here, so we'll we'll throw it to Scott. Uh, also, well, this is Daphne, who's awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell. And Hi. doing magic signs again. I don't know. The- I was just trying to do some um, goofy uh, signs. Is all. Sorry, <laughs> I just woke up from a nap about fifteen minutes ago. Oh, well, that'll wake you up. <laughs> That's what I usually do. Uh, <laughs> good to see you, Daphne. As it's always, great to see you guys. Uh, and I heard, are you are you working on your Halloween costume already, or something else? <laughs> no, I um, I have. I'm working on a gift for a friend, and I had an epiphany okay. earlier this morning. So, which had me out at the fabric store before it opened. That's with, all made, the, with all the other weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> That's what made me wonder. Some people crash the doors for rock concerts. Daphne crashes the fabric. The fabric store. <laughs> Getting some uh, embroidery floss. That's awesome. That's awesome. Also, with us is Doc Rotten. Uh, Doc, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, Excellent. Lo- looking forward to this. I like a nice old uh, old dark house movie. So It is. It is kind of, isn't it? Um, but before we get to the movie... Decades of Horror and Gruesome Magazine also partner with Play Now Media and their streaming services. They have a, a bunch of streaming channels. And in particular, Decades of Horror, the classic era is on the classic sci-fi movie channel, the classic horror movie channel, and the Wicked Horror TV channel. So you can see our smiling faces on an app. Huh? What's up with that? Uh, and and uh, faces, so. you could, well, yeah. <laughs> You're on there now too. The anyway, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Um, yeah. So, and uh, our stuff is available. It's not premium content. So, if you uh, subscribe to the channel, 
and don't don't actually uh, uh, pay the uh, monthly fee, then you'll be able to see ours with commercials and lots of other movies with commercials. If you pay the monthly fee and subscribe, then you'll be able to watch movies without commercials and some premium Yay. content. So lots of good stuff. Check us out. Check us out there. So, spoiler alert, this movie is only 83 years old. <laughs> That's Practically it. brand new. <laughs> there's not really a whole lot of... Uh, well, it does have kind of a surprising ending. <laughs> it winds up quickly. Um, yeah, it does, it does. <laughs> time, time to wrap this up, boys. Uh, <laughs> So uh, see the we're going to start out there. <laughs> well, actually, we will talk about that. Uh, the uh, On this podcast, we start out by giving some basic details of the film that we're covering, followed by each of our first impressions, and then we move into taglines and general discussion of the uh, cast and crew that made the movie and anything else that trips our trigger. Uh, so our topic today is King of the Zombies, which was picked by Scott. And he actually uh, sent me a thing a long time ago that said, if, if you ever do King of the Zombies, can I please, please be on? <laughs> so I said, sure. Took the Enjoy. opportunity. Interesting uh, choice. <laughs> uh, well, it, there so are King, of the, the King of the Zombies was released in 1941, directed by Gene Yarbrough. Written by Edmund Kelso, the music by Edward J. K. The cast includes Mantan Moreland, Dick Purcell, Joan Woodbury, Henry Victor, John Archer, Patricia Stacy, Marguerite Witten, Lee Whipper. I did leave one off of there, but I will talk about her. Uh, production company, Lindsley Parsons Productions, and it is distributed by Monogram Pictures. Filming dates from March 28th to April 1941. I'm guessing that was like maybe April 3rd or so because most of these films were shot in a week or two at the most. Uh, Poverty Row Pictures uh, released May 14th, 1941. Not a lot of production time in there. Uh, we started filming March 28th. We kicked that bugger out six weeks later. Uh, synopsis on a spooky island three stranded travelers find an evil doctor working with foreign spies and in control of zombies zombies and there's uh <laughs> the evil the evil doctor's uh wife right there the ghost in white and uh two of our <laughs> two of our three vampire hunters so to speak zombie hunters i guess john archer and, and manton world um yeah so what do you say folks first impressions and since this is scott's pick we're gonna let him go first so scott why did you pick this film when did you first see it and uh what were what were your first impressions and what about now okay um a lot of questions there are sometimes you see them a lot of questions. Yeah, <laughs> so sometimes you see a film and it's it's just an instant classic. Um, it just redefines everything about cinema. This is not one of those. <laughs> um, this is. I first saw this a few years back, and I am pretty sure that on my first viewing of it, I absolutely hated it. Um, I found it just kind of offensive in places and just there wasn't a whole lot going on and just it just didn't grab me but for whatever reason um i ended up seeing it a second time i think because i had it on playing on like youtube or something and it just kind of cycled back through the loop and the second time i started paying a little bit more attention to it and I, I found myself kind of fascinated by it. Um, it's, it is a very silly film. Um, the, there is some bad acting and some bad racial stereotyping in it. Uh, yes. But I started <laughs> realizing that the, the, our main character, um, the movie, uh, Manton Moreland, is actually kind of 
undermining a lot of those stereotypes with his performance. And really, it, it was kind of an unusual film in that, you know, for 1941, because you basically have a, a I have a dog in my lap now. Um, a, there he is. A, yeah, there she is, yeah. Uh, a, basically a black lead in uh, a mainstream um, film. Um, and that sent me down kind of a rabbit hole where I started looking at uh, him and a lot of the other actors and such and found that this is a that this is a really rich film as far as the actors in it go. Um, it's it's kind of fascinating to, to look at them. It's very much a piece of kind of disposable horror comedy that was made at the time. Um, it's not a blockbuster. This was a very kind of just a program filler for the most part. Definitely um, a B picture, yeah. Yeah, it's not a classic film. It's not even a particularly good film. But it is kind of an entertaining film, and sometimes that's really all you need. And just the little side notes about its its time, um, you know, uh, the the things that kind of date it, and just the background of the actors kind of checks off a lot of my boxes for interest. And particularly, I really want to, I really really like Manton Moreland. And I think he deserves a lot more attention, I think. So, um, does it hold up? Well, it didn't really hold up in the first place. But, <laughs> again, like I said, it's kind of entertaining. So, um, I think it's at least worth a watch. So, Okay. So, uh, thanks, Scott. Um, welcome. Doctor. Yay! Hi. <laughs> had you seen this before? I I had not. Uh, this has always been one of those. They're always in the, like the dollar bin kind of films, sir. You know what I mean? It, uh, is this some um, public domain? I wonder. I think it um, is. But it's it's always been one that I just kind of skipped over for whatever reason. I knew of it, you know. But I always confuse it with Revolt of the Zombies for whatever stupid reason. And I almost mm -hmm. watched that one. And went, Wait, no, that's not the right <laughs> one. It's not it's cool. But um, at the same time, I really like the late thirties, forties, old you know, old dark house movies. I think, uh, um, what is it? Ghost, the uh, Ghost Breakers, right? Mm -hmm. Right with uh, Bob. Yeah. I think I, it, it was a year before this, and kind of led that pack, um, which is a, a very fun movie. Also has the same kind of. Uh, of its time problems. <laughs> yeah. um, and this one, is, of course, is made to be a, uh, you know, to take advantage of that, the success of that film, as it was, you know, and there's others like it. But uh, so the answer is no, I've never, I've never seen this before until this past weekend. Um, and I just like other films of its ilk, I enjoyed it for what it is. It, it does, it will easily rub you the wrong way in certain aspects. <laughs> um, yeah. But at the same time, it, if you look at it as a 19, well, if you look at a 1941 film, it you know, could have been, on, I suppose it could have been a lot worse. But it, because uh, um, it doesn't play too heavily on a couple other um, uh, stereotypes and stuff that it could, you know, giving. They, they they kind of play low the the German aspect of it, and they don't have any other other ones. They, they could have gotten really bad, uh, but I I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it because, like you were saying, Scott, the um, our one character, which is not even first billing, is actually our lead. Mm -hmm. uh, it even though he's he's not addressed as being the lead throughout. The, he's he's the comedic, right? He's yeah, he's because you know, the other guys are straight men to him. Um, to be honest with it, uh, but uh, so in the short, if you, if I look at it as a zombie film, it's it's like not even don't even get this thing near me. But if I look at it as an old dark house film or, or a horror comedy from the forties, it's it's actually lives up and it's kind of funny. And I I I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself with this quite a bit. Um, 
I, I could really feel the inspiration from the other films, you know, the, the, you know, especially the Bob Hope film. Uh, but I also could feel the inspiration of who they wanted in the role yeah. <laughs> of our yes. lead because he's, oh, yeah. he's not really not acting like uh, Bell Lugosi at all. Um, he kind of, which is interesting. I mean, we probably get this later, but you know, Bell Lugosi is obviously the person they wanted starring in this film. Um, there is a second choice. We'll get to that later. Uh, would have been interesting as well. Um, but at the same time, it it's, you know, kind of, it's, he's perfectly fine. Kathy, he, he does what he has to do. Uh, the voodoo aspects of it, um, I found interesting because they're, they're played for laughs, but they're taken seriously. You know, they're not, it's not bogus. You know, they actually believe that that's going to do what they're, you know, what it wants to do. And they don't really say it didn't. <laughs> All right. Um, so I found that interesting. Um, but I, okay, I will confess, I had to watch it a second time just so I remember the ending because the ending sneaks up on you so fast. And I was thinking, I was, I was like this this morning, I was like, God, do I remember the end of the movie? And I, I for, for like me, I was like, I know I watched it. But how did that, how did I, but how did it end? So I had to watch the last 10 minutes again just to remind myself. Because it ends just like, if you blink, you will miss the ending of this movie. <laughs> and suddenly they're talking on the radio. But uh, it, it does like an old dark house, not an old dark house, but a house on Han Hill thing with <laughs> 10 years before house on Well, 20 years. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is it almost 20 years before? Almost, right? 18? 40, 15. 18 yeah. years, right? <laughs> uh, so, okay. I'll shut up. Next. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I found myself enjoying it. I'm a bear. Well, good. It's <laughs> good. Uh, absolutely. Well, next up then is Daphne. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I hadn't seen it before, and to be honest, I haven't heard of it before. And um, yeah, when I first when I first started watching, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, like, like everybody else has talked about the, the racial stereotypes, the um, but I, I did, I, I, it did bring me back to watching um, some of the Bob Hope um, movies and stuff with Oma and Opa on the weekends, and so I was like, okay, you know, just go along with it. I enjoyed the story; it was fun. Um, I laughed, <laughs> and I definitely. Uh, I can see, I was really happy to read that Bella Lugosi was who they wanted because when he was walking down, when the main character was walking mm. down the stairs with the candle, I was like, what are they doing? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, so I was like, okay, yeah, you're not, you're not crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, there was parts about it that, yeah, we're kind of, uh, but all in all, it was fun, a fun movie. I laughed and it was goofy and fun. <laughs> so I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I watched this a couple of years ago and I think that's when Scott first brought it up. I went, he wants, if we do King of the Zombies, well, let me check this out. And I watched <laughs> it and went, why does he want to do this? <laughs> you know? But then now that we're doing it, I, I got, I don't know. I enjoyed it more. I don't know what I mm -hmm. thought. I mean, so this came out also, not only was it the same time as the, the Bob Hope film, but it's also roughly the same time as I Walked With a Zombie, which is serious, right? Mm -hmm. So, and we had, what, in the 30s, we had White Zombie, and then I think Revenge of the Zombies is kind of a sequel mm -hmm. uh, to that. And this one actually has a sequel too, right? This Actually, Revenge of the Zombies is the sequel to this one. Revolt okay, revolt of the, of the zombies. Revolt right. of the zombies. Right. I, I knew it was a, an R E word, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I don't know what I expected, but I should have known if uh, Manton Moreland was in it. And at first, I was a little uncomfortable with that, but I'm sorry, the guy is funny, and it's <laughs> and it's not people making fun of him. He is saying funny things and he and the the one uh uh maid samantha 
uh, is are just hilarious. They're really good together. Um, the only thing that makes it a little bit uncomfortable is they, they kind of talk with this uh, uh, period uh, ethnic Southern yeah. dialogue oh, or something. Yeah, very, yeah. Uh, but, the, the hell, but, you will. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, he's funny and he drives the action. He's, he's the one that knows what's going on and nobody mm-hmm. will listen yep. to him. And he keeps telling them over and over again, you know? Uh, anyway, so in that way, he is kind of a, uh, mm-hmm. a lead, lead character. He actually, he has, I, I think if you measure it, he has far more screen time than anybody else. In the and movie. and di- yeah, and lines too. And, and more dialogue. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so anyway, in the end, I thought it was kind of fun and I do realize they, you know, they originally wanted to make a horror movie, but then they went, Oh wait, what, what was the other one? Ghosts on the loose. Uh, Ghost Ghost, Breakers, Ghost Breakers, yeah. Ghost, Ghost Breakers. Breakers, yeah. So it's like, uh, okay, we'll we'll do that instead. So we're gonna we'll do a fast switch to a comedy, uh, and we'll talk about the end. But the end, it's like, and we, we have to talk about the zo- just the zombies in general. Mm. Why? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, what did they anyway? Uh, well, let's let's go on from there. And so. Before we go any farther, I had to dig the graves up with somebody, right? <laughs> I guess, I guess. And so before we go any farther, we have to do uh, taglines. And since Chad's not here, Doc has generously volunteered to do the taglines. Take the hit, incur <laughs> the virus, the tagline uh, disease, and it, so it's now time for. Taglines with Chad, as played by Doc Rod. <laughs> oh boy! Okay, um, taglines for King of the Zombies are human sacrifices, savage torture, voodoo rites. <laughs> Those are all caps. Come on, everybody. All true. <laughs> Time to Those go. are all, all right. true. They're, yeah, they actually Those do are true. All right. Um, the next one blood chilling revelations of the weird cult that practices its, ma- blah, 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 its black magic. They didn't have the blue in there. That was me. Uh, in impenetrable jungles of Central America. Mm. Oh, oh. I don't think it was in Central America, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it was. It was. Well, they said that they were going yeah, to the but... Bahamas, though. So, uh-huh. well, yeah. well, it was all—it was all about the Panama Canal, right? Because yeah, all... yeah, well, well, that, that's true. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I guess that was a thing. The um, all right, the third that's one. Right. That's right. Are you a zombie? If you can sit through the spine-tingling carnival of shrieks and howls without giving the thrill of a lifetime, you must belong. <laughs> To the living dead. Huh. I don't know if that's a good tagline. <laughs> Sounds like it's a great tagline. I don't know if it belongs to the living dead. All right. Uh, number There's four. a lot of questions. In there. Yeah, thrill of a yeah. lifetime. I, yeah, okay. Are you a zombie? <laughs> Are you a zombie? Uh, at number, number four, a beautiful girl among hundreds of zombie worshippers forced to submit to the rites of torture of the zombie chief. <sighs> Zombie chief, okay. Zombie chief. I almost said chef. That didn't want to work. <laughs> but we'll go with chief. All right. And finally, don't miss this shock-crammed, punch-packed, double thriller chiller terror yes. program. There you go. I can't I believe like you it. said that without I, I would have made a mistake, I'm sure. There was too many. Too many punch bags. Not crammed. Punch bags. Thriller chili. You got it. And then they throw a not one that could be yeah. one in the middle of it all. And they ask me to do it. All right. And you did uh, it. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. The tag lines. Those are the tag And lines. that's been <laughs> Tag Lines with Chad as played by Doc Rod. <laughs> Won't be doing that again, will we? <laughs> and where is 
Chad, please. Now we'll do the magic Hollywood Squares mix up. <laughs> and let's go with let's take a look at some posters. <laughs> and we'll see just where those taglines come from. Uh, oh, this is the boy. one I see the most of, I think. And there's yep. no taglines on it. Not a one. That's a great 40s poster. Come on. It okay. is. It is. Move a Noor going on. Okay. He's looming, leering over the title. As tells you very little, if anything, about the movie. <laughs> well, and interesting, I yep. mean, the uh, second, the, the let's see here. The second and fourth build actors are on this poster, but not the first and third. Mm. Yeah. And the woman is not, I guess she is listed in small print over there. I'm not sure. I no, that would be Joan large. Woodbury. So she's, no, yeah, she's not listed. She's not oh, there. she is listed there. She is listed. However, she's that the, is John no. Archer rather than Dick Purcell. That's John Archer. It's not Dick Purcell. <laughs> So. And uh, Manton Moreland is not there. Is Dick Purcell, the is he the Irishman? They keep referring to yeah. him as the Irishman. Okay, he was the pilot, yes. the plane pilot. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Mac. Um, all right. Well, and here's Irishman. here's the source of one tagline. <laughs> it's just a standard. Oh, look at that! Oh, it looks like a page from TV Guide, but it's yeah. uh, oh, probably an ad yeah. or something. That's fantastic. And we got the blood chilling revelations on there, and. Human Lo sacrifice. Love the font. Love the font on zombies. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It doesn't feel very 40s, but I guess maybe it is. No. It's electrified. It and we got everybody on there. We've got Manton, uh, John Archer, Dick Purcell, Henry Victor, Joanne Woodbury, and uh, I forget her name, the yeah. wife's name. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's her only credit. Patricia Stacy. That's it. That was who that was. So. I remember that. All right. What else do we have? We've got. Hmm. I don't know uh, what this is, other than a possibly like a it's stuff the, to use and ads. It, it looks like the back of a VHS box. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, there we go. Distributors. So yeah. VHScollector.com. Okay. Well, gosh darn. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of cool. No, it is. I, it is. I love the way like you have the our the three leads here, and then you have the villain in very tiny letters right underneath everybody so <laughs> mm. yeah. which would have been in big letters if it was Bela Lugosi yeah <laughs> oh yes 1996 copyright um all right then we also have uh that's one of your a, dollar specials uh, there. <laughs> a couple of lobby card type things one is sort of a poster a little bit different I do like that one Wonder why but, they but, don't. Why don't they make lobby cards anymore? I know. It wouldn't be awesome to go down there and instead of seeing, you know, you see the big posters, mm -hmm. you know, right when you go into theater. But if they had like the lobby cards like yeah. lined up yeah. along the wall, like oh man, that wouldn't would that be, be awesome? so cool. Yeah, Get you yeah I found up. there's. I found like a half a dozen like this one on the bottom that had that same sort of. Uh, I don't know what do you call that word balloon of King of the Zombies and mm -hmm. then different colorized pictures. It's it's in black and white, folks. Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> yes. And there, this is looks like an execution. All these people are on their knees. Yeah, but with the zombie mask behind them. Yeah, the, the I mean that's definitely a a staged picture because yeah, 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 they yeah. never said like that. But there's one uh, too many people on their knees. <laughs> and then our dual language poster, which is just like. I never knew about till we started doing this podcast. But <laughs> Leroy Des is the zombies, French, and De Corning de Zombies, Dutch. And they pretty much say what you think they say. They're the title, <laughs> the King of the Zombies. Yep. But that's a different different poster, too. I kind of like that. I and mean, we have our I kind of like that one too. Yeah, we have our three, our, our three fearless zombie fighters there in the corner. Yeah, and and uh, the, the ghost in white for yeah, the, uh, yeah, the lady in white. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to watch the movie to find out what that's all about. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and <laughs> that DVD box in the bottom is just crazy. That's, that's <laughs> atrocious. No, that's atrocious. That yeah. is so bad. Yeah. 
That is so bad. I don't know. I kind of like it. It's just so like, no. Oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's like so makes it seem much more action packed. Oh, Bright yellow lettering with a, I don't know what color that is, uh, pinkish red background. Bright green bad guy with a yellow halo around Just him. Just throw it all at the screen, fellas. Oh, that's just, <laughs> that is so bad. That's those colors are clashing. The uh, the one above is that kind of standard. We get yeah. those two color ones all the time that have green and orange on them for some reason. Sounds like Sunday paper print there. All right, and I think. <laughs> I think that's it yeah. for posters. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so I want to talk about Gene Yarbrough because okay. this guy uh, is interesting. There's a picture there of him with Lou Costello and a chimp from one of the, <laughs> I assume from the Abbott Costello movies. Or the show. That might have been the show. Uh, oh, it could be the show. Yeah, Possible he directed some of the, the show, yeah. series. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, the, uh, he directed the devil bat with Lugosi, mm -hmm. which is a, mm -hmm. actually it's kind of a, I've thought about doing that one several times cause it's, it's got its, uh, it's got its, uh, horror, but it also has this, uh, if I remember correctly, this kind of quick patter of these reporters that are running all over the place, chasing things down. That's, that's kind of funny. Well, that was only a year before this too. Uh, and then she wolf of London which stars June Lockhart. I got to see that. I haven't seen that. No. Uh, who is, who's June Lockhart? That's from uh, Lost in Space. Yeah. I think she was Lassie's mom too. Maybe. Could have been Lassie. just off the top of my head. Well, maybe the boy that owned Lassie. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, Doc. <laughs> the mom on last. Don't week. don't ever take Jeff literally, <laughs> because he's going to kind of omit a few. Uh, she was a strings getting for me to be. Um, My favorite Martian. Now that's what I want more yes. of. Yes, yes. He did uh, several episodes of My Favorite Martian. He did. He directed all the episodes <laughs> of The Guns of Will Sonnet, which starred Walter Brennan. And Dak Rambo. I don't know whatever happened to Dak Rambo, but Dak uh, Rambo. Dak Rambo. <laughs> Dak Rambo. If I if I remember right, there was a grandfather and a grandson looking for the in-between generation. It was lost <laughs> somewhere. Traveling the West. They had to always come up with a reason why we're traveling the West, having adventures. Uh, but anyway, uh, and the Abbott Costello movie, the particular mm -hmm. one it shows here is In Society, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and uh so he yeah this guy was uh so guess what he was compared to in his biography who he was compared to uh, william bodine hmm. who okay. uh was well known for being a very fast director and we just talked about because he directed billy the kid versus dracula Yep. Yeah, so he was, was a go-to director for uh, for Monogram for a lot of their stuff. So. Yeah. And then in TV, because he could mm -hmm. crank them out, right? Yep. It, I just find this, found it interesting. Anyway. <laughs> well, we, you, there's, there is something you got to say that if there's, there's a monster kids out there everywhere that will uh, throw rotten rotten tomatoes at us if we don't say that he was responsible for rondo hutton hot hutton movies i don't know i'm gonna get the tomatoes anyway um <laughs> the house of horrors and the brute man yep mm -hmm. yep um and as we were talking about before hillbillies in a haunted house hillbillies in a haunted house <laughs> gotta do that one yes, 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 yes uh five bowery boys movies as well uh what do we say devil back king that she will house of horrors yes um so yeah yeah this he one's worked. kind of he worked yeah this, these, this, these are the guys that if you look i'm sorry but all the people in this movie if you look them up it's it, the credits in the 30s and uh are insane because they were probably working for a studio and they're cranking out five or six movies a year you know it's 
there's just tons of them. Um, sorry, Doc, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to just say, if you look at these old dark house movies in the 40s and then you all the way up through like the hillbillies on a haunted house, you can start seeing the blueprint for what is basically Scooby-Doo movies. <laughs> you know, Scooby-Doo, because it's always... <laughs> it's, just, it's just they don't have the meddling kids yet it's always these adults but if you were to put meddling kids in here this would be a scooby-doo movie <laughs> this one even fits that mold too so yeah very much yeah yep. well let's let's uh talk has the, the one guy. about the zombies <laughs> <laughs> like at what point in this movie were the zombies of any use whatsoever to <laughs> well they were guards. They chased people down. They ate Did the they soup. Catch them? That's true. They Some, the somebody soup. had somebody had to eat the soup because it didn't because it didn't have salt in it. So somebody else had to eat it. We um, hear that they were digging somewhere, but they, we they, never they, see yes. them doing that. They would they would dig the graves, up graves to make more zombies <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. It was more. It was well, the they were larger. So Whenever they plan. came for somebody, they go for they go. Two of them go for Mantan when he's sleeping, and he just sits up and runs away they're they just fall a couple the times they do that a couple times after yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they did they succeed at the end well they do get to punch out um dick purcell's character so mac so oh uh, i guess they do i guess that's so that's the only that's one well let's uh we'll talk about our, our characters or so we can get them. i just thought and then the uh, I don't want to jump to the ending yet. So, um, <laughs> they did. Why not? Um, <laughs> so, there's our our three. Uh, I I keep thinking of them as the fearless. You know that that uh, stereotype. Vampire hunters. <laughs> three vampire hunters. Uh, so the guy on the right is Dick Purcell. Uh, he flew the plane and heard the guy on the radio talking gibberish, some language he never heard of. For some reason, he didn't. Ricky I've never heard German. of German. Yeah, I've heard German. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the one in the middle is John Archer, who's apparently a, uh, a secret agent representative of the U.S. government mm -hmm. on a mission to do something with the Panama Canal. I don't know exactly. Well, what it has to do with the Admiral. The Admiral vanished recently in an airplane, and right, they're looking right. for the Admiral. Mm -hmm. um, and we we find the admiral later. Spoilers, we do but, find the admiral. So that's 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 that was kind of like thrown out there at the beginning, <laughs> but you don't know. I have no context for it whatsoever at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then Manton Moreland is uh, Jeff Jefferson. Jeff Jeff Some, somebody Jefferson, and they call him Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. So, and I like that name, so I I was cool. You like that name, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a good. And name. then. Right underneath is uh, Joan Woodbury, who's standing next to a, the requisite skull on the mm -hmm. bookcase shelf. Oh, and there's also uh, one on a, on like a a, can a candle ledge too oh, yeah, that yeah, they yeah. just oh, focus in on. <laughs> what a great um, shot! Pulling off a look of hypnotism because she thinks hypnotism. That the, uh, <laughs> That's the doctor's wife the letters hypnotized. Yeah, <laughs> big, big letters. You wouldn't miss hypnotism, it on the show. Not how to do hypnotism. Yeah, it was hypnotism. It in, just hypnotism. hypnotism. Uh, I was we... trying to look at some of the other titles on the books to think. Just, yeah, I, I was really curious what he had on his show. <laughs> hypnotism. <Yeah>. Okay, so <laughs> Treasure Island. Yeah, we <laughs> should we should know these people. Okay. So we're going to throw this up. Uh, Scott already knows uh, what I've got here, but uh, Dick Purcell, who's given the lead and was actually known as uh, Warner, you know, like the, like the, the, they had a, they had a nickname for him, like champion of Warner brothers B movies or something like that. Uh, and it's too bad. Chad isn't here for this, but mm -hmm. Dick yes. Purcell played yep. Captain America. Yeah, and the cereals. He played the, the cereals. Yep. Yep. And there's bunches of great shots. And uh, what what else is Captain America without a gun? He kind of gets rid of the gun by the time that. Uh, uh, and it's not day. Steve Rogers either. No, the it? no oh, oh, it's not. It's not Steve Rogers. It's I don't know. Grant something, really. isn't it? Or, yeah, it's Grant. Uh, it's yeah. 
Grant, Greg Grant or something like that. He's it's a, a serial yeah. district attorney. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. They, they, I think in the forties, Captain America had a gun. Grant Garland well, in, in the comics. <laughs> Unfortunately, he died in 1944 from heart attacks. Oh. Mm. Uh, right after playing around a golf. Uh, yes. Wow. Yikes. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, play, uh, last film was Leave It to the yeah. Irish because he was called the Irishman in this movie. That's yeah. why yes. I don't remember his name as a character, but they called him the Irishman Irish, like half yeah. a dozen times. And they're like, oh, okay, yep. he's the Irish yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mac. It, it, they called him Mac. Mac. Yeah, Mac. Carthy, Mac. He's so yeah. strange in this movie because he's got the top <laughs> billing and he yes. more or less disappears halfway through the film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he, he does show up again at the end, but has no lines. Yeah. And no. even in the last pivotal. scene, <laughs> yeah. Even in the last scene, he doesn't even show up in the last scene. They just kind of say, "Oh yeah, he's he's over recovered." Yeah. So, <laughs> that, that's, well, okay. the, he, well, he is in the, the bullets weird. got him, but he's he is in the, he's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. How's he doing? Well, the bullets caused a little. Problem. I, I was gonna I was gonna say about that because it, it's kind of obvious that in the script he probably did not make it. <laughs> they just thought that you know what he probably shouldn't die. He is our star? Let's say a little something. Because when they shot him, I went like, "Oh my god, I didn't expect that." <laughs> it's like they shot him like three, at four range three times. Well, he plays that kind of. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Sort of the, sort of the cocky athlete type. Yeah. You know, not yeah. quite as polished as he's the John Han Archer Solo. character. He's right? Han Solo. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point. Well, they kind of, he was he was regarded as the unofficial king of Warner Brothers B movies. Mm. I, I don't know how you get an unofficial. Title. When I was looking up information about the actors, I was kind of surprised that he was who he was just because the billing, it made me think, you know, a, a larger role or something a little right. bit more important. So yeah. exactly. the billing is very strange on this film. Yeah. So. <laughs> he got knocked in the head a couple of times. He did. He, <laughs> he was, he was hitting the head. So the plane crashes on this, uh, wherever they're at, if it's an Island or in a jungle or something. And, uh, what? Anton Moreland, Jeff wakes up laying on a gray. I, <laughs> I love that's the best. Thing. That's yeah. so he goes, but he goes, the other guy. I thought like, I had a little too much color like, to be on. Like, oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> he makes a couple of jokes like that uh, yeah. about not being pale enough or something <laughs> like that. Or, um, <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, Dick Purcell, Mac, he's he's under a tarp or something over outside. Yeah, the plane yeah. fighting with the tarp or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, What's that? What's that? Oh my god! The gash on his head. Um. Well, we need to. Uh, Did they, so? Can I ask so, a Can I ask a quick question? Because you, you, to, yeah, before yeah. we get too far down, because you mentioned what everybody else was in the three cast. What was Jeff? Official. It was the valet. Valet. He was, he was, he was a just a valet. Okay. He was okay. a valet for uh, Bill. So the. All right. Mr. Uh, Bill. Man, so. Mr. Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill. Uh, um. And speaking of Mr. Bill. Yeah. So, there he is. Uh, <laughs> John Archer. And did you see how he got his name? <laughs> I, I love this stuff. I he won a radio um, uh, radio contest sponsored. Uh, that the winner would receive a monogram contract in the name of John Archer. <laughs> All okay. right. And the person, he, the person he beat out to Whoa. win was Hugh Beaumont. Oh. <laughs> Beavers. <laughs> oh. I just, Crazy. And, and then on top of that, if you think about it, his real name, his real last name is Bowman. And now it's no, Archer. that's weird. <laughs> oh no, that's so weird. It's just like, wait a minute. Uh, anyway, again, too bad Chad's not here, but uh, the top picture there of John Archer is uh, in a episode of Batman with Eli Wallach as Mr. Freeze. The episode is called Ice 
spy. I spy. He's Captain Carlisle. <laughs> um. Anyway. And the one below is uh, he plays a state trooper in the Twilight Zone episode. Uh, Will the real Martian go yep. home? I uh, I was wondering if that was it with the um I recognize the the cafe bar yeah that's a good well that's a I good put, episode I, there was a picture of just him with his with his uniform on but this these people are just too cool like yeah sitting at the counter behind him is Jack Elam as a crotchety old guy yeah and the guy sitting episode. at the table is John Hoyt who's got his third arm hidden under his jacket such a good episode. <laughs> And Barty Phillips, the counterman, has got his third eye under yeah, his hat. It's under just, his hat. It's a great, God, great episode. That's a good one. Yeah, and we good. talked about him from uh, I Was a Teenage Werewolf. He was, uh, I forget if he was a cop or what he was in I Was a Teenage yes, Werewolf. Yes, I think he was a cop. Yeah. Was good trying time. to give the guy a break. <clears throat> and... Yeah. For old time radio fans, John Archer did play the shadow for a year yes, in huh. 1944, 1945. So what was it? I saw some I saw some trivia where they tried to tie this all in. Like he played the shadow on radio. Uh Ann Archer, the actress, is his daughter. Mm -hmm. Uh with Marjorie she's Lord. Ann Bowman. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Ann Bowman, but Ann, Ann Archer. And what was it? Alec Baldwin made the Phantom and Ann Archer or something, something, something. I don't know. There's some kind, some six degrees of Ann Archer. Yeah. <laughs> Only the Phantom knows. The uh, okay. The Shadow knows. Oh, I got the wrong yeah. one, don't I? Yeah. Uh, I'm getting all mixed up. Well, and our other one, uh, Joanne Woodbury was Brenda Starr reporter. Did I say that one already? Oh, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard the name Brenda Starr in a long time. Didn't they try to uh, do that as a TV show later in the 70s? Maybe. This was a serial, I believe. It was, yeah. And she also, what did you what did you bring up to me, Scott? Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein. She did actually was uncredited as the uh, Dr. Pretorius's little queen. The miniature queen in, ah. the, uh, in Bride of Frankenstein. So I do love Joan Woodbury. She is one of my favorite actresses from that from that era. So she did really good. She was really good. Yeah, yeah. whenever they let her actually, you know, say something, uh, yeah. they kept interrupting her every time she would start to say something. Somebody would interrupt her. Usually our villain, but. Uh, <laughs> They made a Brenda Star. Sorry, I'm doing a deaf here. They made a Brenda <laughs> Star movie in 1989, and it was about the artist who put himself into the cartoon of you know because he you know was a com comic strip Brenda Star, and Brenda Star was played by Brooke Shields, and the Timothy Dalton was the artist. I feel bad that Chad couldn't be here because all of these things tie back into things that he's interested in. No. <laughs> okay. So I think. I oh, think... there was a seven. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, there I'm she is. There you go. Very cool. It's hard to get a good picture of that small, but. Uh, Very yeah. good. From Brian Frankenstein. So, yeah. Okay. Cool stuff. Cool beans. I, I know. I know I'm beating a dead horse, but I got to do this. <laughs> Keep doing <laughs> so there it. Was Keep a, doing because it. there's some fun. Um, it doesn't, it has more to do with the seventies than this, but there was a Brenda star in the seventies. I, I just knew there was, it was Jill St. John, but the bad guy in it was played by Victor Buono, who we've been talking about oh, yeah, a lot cool. lately anyway. And Sorrel oh, Brook is in it too. <laughs> uh, but it was a TV um, movie. Anyway, I'll shut up. Go on. Don't get oh, Dot cool. going on Brenda Starr. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Who the fuck? <laughs> she was in, um. A uh, gosh, the call of the wild, too. The old, oh, uh, yeah, a, a version of that. Yeah. Yep. yep, yeah. No, they said that sounded like she was a pretty uh, talented person and uh, very early on in her life, but she kind of got typecast. And uh, I believe, yeah, she and uh, later on, she and her when she got out of acting, she and her husband started a uh opera group 
somewhere in California. Mm-hmm. Um, and also a theater group. So she stayed in the business, had lots, lots of stuff going on. Um, so moving on, can we move on, Doc? Please, uh, please do. No more Brenda Star. <laughs> Brenda Star. No, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm satisfied. So here's our villain, Henry Victor, or Doctor. Uh, what was his name? Sangre. Sangre. Doctor Sangre. And there's his wife. The first couple times we see her, she's just walking like a zombie. Mm-hmm. And she just stares ahead, doesn't move, doesn't talk to anybody, and he acts like, you know, here's my wife. And and so yeah. does everybody else. Yeah. Nobody yeah. makes any uh, not weird at all. It's perfectly normal. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Although the candle really, shot that Daphne brought yeah. up, and it's kind of hard to it's like what is happening here? <laughs> what is going on? I really liked her though. I really liked like I, I liked this um the picture you have here. I just kind of liked how I don't know how she pulled it off. I like when she comes out of the shadows in the, in yeah. the scene in the bedroom where there's a one yeah. that's on the posters and stuff. Yeah. Because it, it was just yeah. so now, it, it, out of context. If you were thinking it was a, a real horror film and they showed you uh, that scene, yeah. it'd be kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it comes the across woman the in class, white. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other, I think I have. Yes. Oh, they were awesome too. These guys are awesome. Yep. Uh, this guy's name is Lee Whipper. Mm-hmm. Played Mamba, the the butler. I loved how he just didn't seem to care. Yeah, you know, he's just always. <laughs> I tried to find a picture, but I couldn't. Uh, uh, the The resolutions on it up, but right from the very beginning, when they're the doctors talking to the three of them, you see, you see the sh- shadowy figure walking around behind him, mm-hmm. going across the room, and then they. Uh, uh, Jeff sees him. Uh, he's got one of these little tiny skinny candle lighter things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then when he turns to walk out of the room, he, he, he always walks real slow and very smoothly. Then he goes, yep. yes. fingers yes, put, up it, puts the flame yeah, out. Put the flame out. Uh, that was sharp. Out. Yeah. Uh, and the woman in the bottom stirring the soup or cauldron <laughs> or something brew. Is brew. Madame, yeah. that was brew. brew she was making yeah. some brew madam sultawan yeah yep. as tahama so both of them uh thank you lee whipper was the first black member of the actors equity association and was also founder of the negro actors guild and a graduate of harvard law school was also in 21 plays so uh make a little money on the side and uh she was the first african-american actress to work under contract at a major studio the studio was fine arts uh she was known for the theatricality of her appearance particularly her penchant for turbans and wearing her hair in two long braids so I like her a lot. I wish I knew yeah. more about her. Uh, she is fascinating, really. She's got a lot mm-hmm. of interesting stuff. I was, I think it was Lillian Gish who actually said that you know they nobody knew what the origin of her name, Madame Soltewan, okay. was okay. because uh-huh. nobody wanted to ask her about it. <laughs> they were just terrified by her. Mm-hmm. So. She I was wrote her, in, uh, I wrote her name down to research more because I'm trying to learn more about characters who are this this older woman um who kind of you take as a witch, you know, or and somehow mm-hmm, somehow mm-hmm. always ends up kind of representing a witch in movies and stories and stuff. Um That's she definitely falls into that yeah, that category. Voodoo, voodoo priestess. Side yeah. Of it. yeah. Uh-huh. She's definitely she's definitely the voodoo priestess. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's she was in a bunch of stuff. She's, she's in a, trying uh, to do the hypnotism at the end. Yeah, but come on, but Admiral, <laughs> come on come in. On. <laughs> the story of the zombie. The uh, start. Sorry, uh, Tarzan and the Trapper. She played the witch woman in 1960, which I'm going to assume is Lex Barker. No, it's Gordon Scott. That's Tarzan. 
so a latter latter day uh tarzan movie uh she was also in uh mighty joe young oh and she came back for the sequel as well and the sequel of this yes yeah Yeah, weren't these two folks the only ones that were in the sequel yeah, uh, no, uh, okay, yeah, it's uh, the sequel is a very different film. It's mm-hmm. uh, and really the only connecting tissue is Manton Moreland's character's name, Jeff. In both. Huh. Um, does it even give you a clue that he's the same character, or does it just happen to be the same? Not name? really. Um, mm-hmm. it's he, he just has the same name, and uh, it's kind of the same plot except they got john carradine in as your villain Mm -hmm. and it's a lot more confusing so (laughs) wow okay john carradine that john carradine to me is like a mystery he like he he mixes these really really low rent movies with kind of decent movies you know that Mm -hmm. where he shows his acting chops uh anyway I, I I like him a lot, if if for no other reason than his voice and his, uh, you know, I think he's one of those actors we talk about quite a bit. I think Rip Torn was one we talked about in the 80s recently. If he wasn't doing anything, he took the job. He just, he was a working actor. Yeah. You know, yep. So, um, She also was in a bunch of, uh, I don't know exactly what they called them, race, they used to call them race records, so I'm assuming them. Uh, you know, movies made by African American filmmakers. Now we have to go on to. Do we recognize these people? Where do you recognize these people from? Anybody? Anybody recognize Henry Victor from anything? Uh, yes. <laughs> He's a strong man in freaks. Hmm. Dr. Sangre hmm. was. Hercules, the evil Hercules in the in Freaks. Hmm. I didn't. I didn't put that. Together. I didn't. I yeah. didn't either. Yeah. I could see. Yeah, it's, it's not his face that it's him, but uh, I didn't put it together. Uh-uh. Well, he also he had a uh, a silent film career going pretty good, but then once the talkies came in, his German accent kind of typecast him into hmm. roles like that. Played a I lot think, of nasty Nazis. I think he was in uh, To Be or Not to Be with Jack Benny as a Nazi officer in that one. Yes, you're right. You're right. He close song, right? Um And then the picture in the bottom is uh, Manton Moreland as the mailman in Spider Baby. Yep. That was what he oh, drives up on that three-wheeler thing and yeah. tries to get uh, into the didn't catch that either. Wow. That's a really good shot. I, I like that. I never good recognized movies. Henry Victor. I was reading about him and went, no, that wasn't that was yeah. him. You know, it's just like I didn't get it at all. No. Okay. So here's a couple of uh Jeff after he gets zombified. The doctor twirls a watch in front of him and has him repeat after him. I I don't know my name. I am a zombie. I am a zombie. I uh, I was kind of confused. Like I was like, did he ever get hypnotized? <laughs> was or uh, I don't huh? think I, don't... So. <laughs> I think he was too smart. But to he get like hypnotized. yeah yeah. <laughs> Move over, boys. I'm part of the gang now. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a that was a great that line. Was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he leads then, him in. My, my squad. He calls him my yeah. squad. Because <laughs> yeah, he, he, he leads him like a, the troop yeah. leader. Can yeah, a white, yeah, yeah. Can I have a white follow. zombie with you? No, he's not in my squad. Yeah. <laughs> and him and Marguerite as as Jeff and Samantha are just yeah. fantastic together. They I had a uh, great chemistry. I was almost, I was getting like a His Girl Friday vibe going on with uh, just their interactions and um it was fun. Mm-hmm. She had a great voice too. I loved her her voice, just her voice. It was very, uh, I don't know, kind of deeper and. Well, she had some some great funny lines too. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the things like you know, uh, we're just talking about her uh, her her fiance, and he's dead. Oh, do you miss him? No, I still yeah. see him around now and yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
<laughs> yeah, it was. They were just cracking jokes left and right. It was great. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's not dead. Um, the one I'm trying to find a good. I had a great picture of the two of them. Okay, go ahead, Doc. I, I was just gonna say, I'm looking at the bio for um, uh, Mart uh, Mantan Scar. I was gonna say Martin. I knew that was wrong. Mantan Moreland. Is that he? He in the 30s and 40s. While in this, you know, this movie is in the 40s part of it, he became one of the uh, popular and considered very funny. What they would call second bananas, mm -hmm. air quotes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, but his um, his brand of humor, in which we've commented loosely about, that's being kind of little cringy at moments or um, he in the sixties, 50, 60s ostracized for it. And uh, mm -hmm. that he found himself out of work. And mm -hmm. so by the time we see him in the, the last picture you showed, he was basically the Spider -babies. Spider -babies. Yeah. 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 He well, starts getting start work again. Back. And then he, uh, shortly yeah. after that, he dies. Right after, yeah. Uh, 73. Um, right. Now in his biography on him, um, the, the biographer comments that actually it was, not it was a it was actually more the NAACP had a list of people that they did not like to see in in films and it was people like Manson Moreland um mm -hmm. step and fetch it um there's another one that eat and sleep basically they had a whole list of them and they complained to the studios and then the studios rather than rewriting the parts just were like okay well we just don't cast them so mm -hmm. that's why they stopped getting roles and stuff like that mm -hmm. he i think manton moreland did particularly could have done other you know other roles and carried more um more yeah because they like that. i mean they certainly didn't leave that i mean up until the 60s you still found that stereotype out there i mean look at it's a mad, oh, mad, yeah. mad world. The mm -hmm. the other cab driver, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's mm -hmm. just so much the same character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, just, yeah, yeah. Um, That's mid sixties. I haven't he's, seen he's, the he's, movie he's, um, Bamboozled, but I when I was reading about it, they said that one of the characters in there was kind of based on um, Moreland and kind oh. of this char this type of stereotype. Mm -hmm. um, this issue with people playing these kind of stereotypes and, and these roles and stuff. And, but I've never seen that movie, so I don't, yeah. I don't know if that's true. Um, I, just, I just think he's genuinely funny. And I, what yeah. I was thinking of when I saw that Gene Yarbrough did these Costello movies, I'm like, he's, he's a Luke Costello in this. Movie Absolutely. Else. Oh, he very much is. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Much yeah. yeah he's got yeah. that yeah. same kind of humor as like Luke mm -hmm. Costello or Hunts Hall or yeah. even Bob Hope um, mm -hmm. with the, you know, like the kind of scared mm -hmm. thing. The other yeah. th thing about this, and you probably saw this in your research, he almost was one of the three stooges. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. He, uh, there's another film universal did a mystery called uh, the strange case of Dr. Rx. Mm -hmm. And mm, yeah. in that mm -hmm. film he had, um, they paired him with Shemp Howard and the two of them have this scene together and they're just playing off of each other and they have all this timing back and forth and apparently he impressed Shemp so much. Shemp went to Mo and said, hey, listen, if ever you need a replacement for somebody in the Stooges, this is your guy. And they went um, then into the 50s when after Shemp uh, passed away, Mo and Larry were ready to bring Manton Moreland in and Columbia Pictures said, no, we need somebody that's already under contract to us. So they couldn't do that and they ended up getting, um, that's when they got Joe Besser in for them. Um, but uh, again, in Manton Moreland's biography, they, he had, uh, the uh, biographer had interviewed Mo Howard and he was like, yeah, he goes, Mandy Moreland had the physicality like we had with um, Curly, basically. And he also had the kind of uh, double talk like we had with Shemp. So he could have mm -hmm. covered both mm -hmm. of the bases. Mm -hmm. And he says it would have been great. You know, it would have re revitalized both of our careers. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in here, he's kind of playing a riff of Willie Best mm -hmm. in the, uh, you know, in the Ghost Breakers. Mm -hmm. It's the uh that has this a... whole... go ahead, sorry go on no I'm done. Say, go this, this whole scene where uh they're lining up for the food and she feeds yes. them this, this soup 
And he goes into this big thing about where's the salt? No, you can't have salt. Salt will kill zombies. And you ain't a zombie. I'm a zombie. I don't remember nothing. I don't remember my name, you know. Uh, and then she finally gives him some salt. But when she gives him salt, she just like dumped the whole thing in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, do you, what do you say about a mackerel or something like that? I forget what he said. Yeah, yeah. A herring. Yeah. Herring, yes, herring. Uh, That's hilarious. He gets out of here. Hey, I'm, I'm alive. I'm not a zombie. He'll kill the zombie. And he goes, how do you kill him? He's already dead. Well, just dry up and blow away. Anyway, I... But the guys behind him, those guys, that's what uh, they're the entire show they're yeah. That's Arms all straight, do. shoulders rigid, mm-hmm. no blinking. So there are a couple of uh I don't know how much we'll be able to see here, but uh the ceremony. And the whole zombie dancing and singing thing was just I don't know where <laughs> they came up with that. <laughs> it was just goofy. There was a room full of those other guys. I, uh, and there's in there a scene where they the guy tries on uh like three of you know, the three or four of the masks, including this one in the house, right? Uh, uh, Mac, the yeah, 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 because he's Irish. Oh, you like this Irish? This is yeah. Irish. this is an Irish mask, yeah, that looks <laughs> Irish to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what was going on in that bottom one where uh, Mamba's wearing like a I swear it looked like a bucket upside down or something. Mm-hmm. Um, Lee Whipper. Then. Unbelievers are in the room. Unbelievers. Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, so well, let's, let's real quick talk about the, the end. <laughs> I was going to say this. This is an example of what I'm talking about. They they take the voodoo in this seriously. It's not played uh-huh. like they're yeah. faking it. They're not faking it. They actually think they're going to accomplish what they're going mm-hmm. to do with all those mm-hmm. voodoo shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Um, they're trying to transfer. Well, they they give it a whole right of transference or yeah. something. They're trying to yeah. take. The yes, the to take the admiral, admiral and put it into the other girl so they can ask you questions. Uh, the, his nieces, Joanne Woodbury's, yeah, and, and she's going to tell him where he was going. Isn't that what they're trying to? Yeah, find what out? it was. They're, 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 what they're, his mission was. Yeah, uh-huh. they were trying to. It was all about what are they going to do on the Panama Canal? They wanted uh-huh. to stop it or whatever. Uh, but they <laughs> he interrupts him. Mm-hmm. Right then, yeah, they're yeah. unbelievers in the room, and and then he orders the zombie. <laughs> See, their buddy Mac is back there in the middle. Of the yep, back there he is. There. Yep, yep. yep. And like he orders him children. to get him, and his friend, just Mister Bill, just starts yelling, "No, go away, or stay away, or go, you know, whatever." And he just starts walking towards the doctor, mm-hmm. Sangre. Yep, and just and walks yeah. towards him and. Locks him into the flaming pit, I guess. Right, just like, yeah. just like they, uh, just like if he was the, if they were the skeleton doing the girl in the haunting a hill house, right? <laughs> yeah, it just was. <laughs> hill, yeah, the, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what's the, what's the point of the zombies that don't do what you tell them to do? It's like he just. Yeah. This other but they, just, but they were following him too. They, I don't know. Yeah, was, they followed him. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they just kept walking past. They, they didn't know where they were going. But I like the I like, and then, like and, then he, and then while he while he's walking towards it, then he shoots him a bunch of times, right? Yeah. 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 And that that's at the end. It's like uh, so how's how's your friend? Oh, he's you know can't remember <laughs> those bullets. Yeah, those <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember the line, the bullets didn't help or the bullets. Yeah, yeah something yeah, it's only like that. It's, it's, but he's rearing to go. Yeah, he's he took he's three bullets better. to the chest. <laughs> But yeah, it ended in a hurry. They're they're right in the middle of their big ceremony. They got people dancing and singing and chanting, and the and uh, uh, Madame Sultawan is up there and she's shaking stuff at them, and I, I don't know what all. And but as soon as those zombies start moving, the entire crowd screams and runs yeah. wherever they go. Um, they will, uh-huh. took off. So just just one last thing, just to show some stuff. And I think that's why I talked about the cinematographer because it's actually. They do a pretty good job of, uh, you know, the resolution is bad because it's a 40s movie that's never been restored to uh, Blu-ray quality. quality. It's been put on a DVD, I guess. But uh, the cinematography, I think, is they do a... So here's what I think. They do a good job with the lighting and the shadows and stuff. There's a lot of shadow work in this. Uh, but they're all, like, stock shots. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just, like, square 
there's they don't get too artful with anything except for their shadows in the background um that is a I great mean, scene up top though when she mm -hmm. comes in Cops yeah, are entering, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it also, yeah. when she comes, she looks like she comes floating through the wall the yeah. way they have it. Yeah, I mean, they did that a real good really effect good. of that. Um, yeah, you know that there's a secret passage, but it's still the way it was shot. It just, yeah, it was very effective. And I, I threw that one in on the bottom there where Manton yeah. looks up over the thing with the skull. Yeah. So I just go, <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with that picture at all. Nothing, <laughs> if you want to know the tone of this movie. Yeah. That's it. That picture yeah. to me is the tone of this movie. That's that's yeah. uh, the comedy, and when we got the skulls, there's a little bit of horror and stuff. Yeah. And and using the think. using his big eyes. Mm. Yeah. I like when he, when he says what I was going to say earlier is that you know there are unbelievers in here and or not Mac, but the other guy just stands up. Hi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mister Bill. Mister Bill. Bill. Yeah. He, he just, he just stands up and. You got me. Yep, I'm here. It's kind of clueless. <laughs> Bill has got to be one of the dumbest protagonists yeah. <laughs> I've ever seen in a film. And he was like a small. Oh, oh, oh Jeff, you're <laughs> just dreaming about those zombies, you know. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> you have both uh, him and, you know, eventually Mac and, and Matt yeah. and, um, Jeff are both saying, "Yeah, this is what's going on." No, right. no, I, I, right. I, I think he's just yeah. fine. You know, that's yeah. mysterious doctor. That <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so we always we already mentioned. Uh, I think Doc, you mentioned that the uh, uh, music was nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh, and that was by that Edward so K. That's so awesome. Uh, the only zombie movie that's ever been nominated for Academy Award, according to this, you know, I'd, so far, I'd so far, so far, uh, through 2011, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I've looked a little past that, and I think it's still pretty safe to say, unless you yeah, play yeah. the mummy, the mummy was uh, with Brendan Fraser was nominated for something. So, is that a zombie film? <laughs> so, we have a second, we have a second, uh, degree tie here with leave it to beaver the uh you know john archer beat out hugh beaumont for the name john archer uh, yeah. uh, the cinematographer mac stangler did 142 episodes of leave it to beaver uh 13 episodes of m squad which was a cool series in the 50s uh that starred lee marvin kind of a noir kind of thing um, and I know I saw something. There's a, like he did a bunch of uh, Lone <laughs> Rangers, I think. Daphne's excited. Seventy-eight episodes. <laughs> napped a little while ago. 70, Seventy-eight episodes of the Lone Ranger. Trying to hide it. <laughs> and uh, what was the other one? Oh, Hopalong Cassidy. He did a lot of work on Hopalong Cassidy. Mm, Hopalong. So both the TV show and then back in the back in the day of the movies and stuff. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in. These guys, you know, the, the writer or the, the director and cinematographer were experts at cranking stuff out, you know, mm -hmm. doing that yep. quick TV kind of thing. Yep. Anyway. Yeah, yeah they're, um, they don't get fancy, but it's, you know, they get the job done. So just pretty straightforward. Right? Yeah. Now we talked about that, you know, Victor, the doctor, Dr. Victor Sangre mm -hmm. was uh, designed to be Bela Lugosi and they never took the design away. They just put somebody <laughs> else in there. If you ask me. But at, when, when he became unavailable, they had, and I love the quote in here, furious negotiations uh, to get Peter Laurie in the role. Oh, that would have been sweet. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, and, you know, we talked about the, you know, German and stuff, but this was, um, uh, produced and released prior to Pearl Harbor, right? Because that mm -hmm. would later. So yeah, and they they kind of they they say here they oddly dance and around the blatant references to Nazi Germany, and they do. Yeah. They, they kind yeah. of leave that as an undertone. Uh huh. Uh, but it's obviously that's what they're aiming for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he says something early on where he says, "I'm here via Vienna." So he's yeah he's trying to yeah. say he's Austrian, but yet. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, he does it, say he's Austrian, but you know yeah. that's <laughs> well. And then he and then he said something about his family were um, were there for, 
from Austria or something. They're refugees from mm -hmm. Austria. I went, hmm. hmm. <laughs> yeah. But he uh, he's listed in the uh, press kit as a secret agent for a European government. And that's it. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. What do they mean? <laughs> oh, boy. Certainly not the guy that just took over Poland. And <laughs> Stop. Well, apparently no. the monogram had released a film <laughs> that was critical of uh, critical of Hitler, mm -hmm. and it got oh. denied a European release because of that. Ah. And yeah. They lost a boatload of money, so they were kind of huh. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, they were yeah, kind of scary, uh, scared about being too blatant about it. But had to dance around the politics, huh? Yeah. Wow. Well, they got the point across. <laughs> yeah, they, they did. did so. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's obvious. I mean, <laughs> they're just one step shy of making it, just saying it, right? And but it's interesting that, to hear that they had that they that that had happened though. So thanks for thanks for telling us that. Yeah, yeah. What's interesting also in this is if you notice, um, Doctor Sangre's attitude, especially towards Jeff, is oh very gosh. much a Nazi kind of attitude. Because he's always like saying things like, "Oh well, he's your servant, so we'll put him with the other servants. We don't want otherwise to stay it'll with cause you. problems." Yeah, yes. yeah, it might cause problems, or mm -hmm. you know, just little things like that, little jabs. Mm -hmm. um, at, I didn't, I, I didn't necessarily associate that with the Nazi, but it was definitely, I definitely got that this racist yeah, um, he vibe. Was, um, he was. Like yeah, if he the, didn't the, pour. He didn't pour enough uh, port or sherry or whatever. He only poured three sherries. Yeah. For him, oh, so yeah. and, he wouldn't give it to yeah to, yeah. to make more. Uh -huh. so, yeah, yeah, he um it, it you, if yeah you'll notice that like um, Mac and Bill treat Manton Moreland's character Jeff as basically an equal, um, even though he's like the valet, but he's he's their friend, and at one point even after. Both Mac and Jeff has disappeared. Uh, Bill comes in, and the first person he asks about is Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, but every time Sangre talks to him, he's just kind yeah. of like pushes him to the side, or just mm -hmm. ignores him, or puts him down. So it's yeah. it, it's there. It's definitely a, you know yeah in there. So mm -hmm. yeah, it makes makes a little. I mean, they're making a point, but it's also kind of cringy. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a way yeah. but but it in the way you're describing it makes sense yeah. for that character to behave that way but mm -hmm. yeah he's a i mean he's the villain so i mean yeah. he's, mm -hmm. he's gonna be a bad you know, one mm -hmm. of the bad guys so it's mm -hmm. and so he's acting in a bad bad way towards uh -huh. and a, another i also thought that was another thing that made me go wow bill you're really nothing <laughs> it was like when he was like yeah just go down and and stay with the other you know he just was willing to go along with yeah you know, it's the i treatment was or whatever I, yeah. I actually was put off by that a yeah little bit. i know yeah because yeah. 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 he both bill and mac act that way at first they're yeah. very nonchalant yeah. like yeah. you know they're not defending they're not right you know, they say, yeah no, okay, okay. Get okay. but yeah. they, yeah. they do redeem themselves they do later redeem, yeah right later. And, that, and that's and then, and that's, and that I think that's just how it was, right? Yeah. I mean, you're looking at it now, and it's like doesn't he oh, doesn't he say do something do that. like that's how it was. He say something like, "Don't worry, Mamba will take care of you." Or, something, yeah, yeah. You'll, be, you'll be taken yeah. care of, and, that, and that's when he comes by with the candle thing and does that. Yeah, right? uh, um, but yeah, they they do they insist that he stays up there, and yeah, and I felt much better about it. I right. was like, oh no, these guys right. are yep. turds. Yeah, but no, they they were <laughs> they were caring friends. They're trying to be. <laughs> they were just not, going, going. They were with just it, trying yeah. not to rock the boat. Yeah, yeah. Being yeah. So it's, respectful yeah. guests. Uh -huh. Yeah, but he was a villain for sure. Yeah, those yeah. those few things like that, I was just like, ugh, ooh. Yeah. Not, a good, yeah. man, not a good guy. <laughs> well, look, Ghosty would have been perfect, or yeah. Even, oh man, Peter Laurie would have been a different character different, altogether. But yeah, just I would have loved, loved to see Peter Laurie and Manton Moreland. Go back it would have been forth. interesting, yeah. Because a lot of the, the asides and stuff that Manta yep. Merlin does in here were just off the top of his head. Gene Yarbrough had worked for, for them before mm. and just was like, 
you know, we just let him do his thing and we'll get something good. Yeah. And that's what Ori he, is the same way. So well, that's what he said about, uh, that's what Yarbrough said about uh, Luke Costello too. Mm-hmm. He said, you don't, you don't want to make him stick to the script and you don't want to be too dictatorial on him. You got to give him, otherwise he gets bored and you just got to let him do his stick. Otherwise you lose all that comedy. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I'm We're... just going to say people need to see more Mant and Moreland because I, I would agree with he that. He is hilarious. He is hilarious. Um, a good place to start. There is um, one of the Charlie Chan films, which again problematic, but he has a in the Scarlet Clue. He does his routine with his vaudeville partner in there. That is um, oh, a yeah, very yeah, famous yeah. comedy routine called the indefinite talk routine, which is hysterical. And so him and Ben Carter get together and they have this conversation and you never know exactly what they're talking about because they never finish a sentence before the next one answers it. And it's, it's really funny because it'll be something like, well, last time I saw you, you were, oh, I moved from there. Uh-huh. Now I'm moving over. It. How can you afford to live in that place? <laughs> so it's it, it just goes on like that for a while. It's it's very funny and uh, well. It, and he plays the uh, Charlie Chan's chauffeur, right? In like fifteen yeah. Charlie Chan movies. So. Yeah, yeah. He was good friends with uh, with all the guys there. He's usually paired with whoever the 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 son is like number one son so i think mm-hmm, he worked mm-hmm. with key luke and a few other people like that so not the not the warner oland ones but the sydney taller he did both he was in with both of them so because he actually was working in the them when uh, i believe sydney toller passed away and they moved it over to warner oland or possibly the other way around i can't well remember. i think it was i thought warner oland was first yeah and then so Sidney Toller, passed. and then when Sidney Toller died, then the, whoever the next one was, and I'm not sure who the next one was. Uh, uh, Roland Winters, I think. There you go. So. Anyway, uh, it is. I, I, it, yeah. They they started, yeah. a, they did a couple of movies called uh, Manton something or another. You know, like they were going to do a string of Manton movies, you know. Yeah, like I can't remember the title, but like Banton does this or whatever. All right, um, so. yeah, check it out. Don't don't turn your nose up. It's it's a little rough for today's uh, uh, culture, I guess. It's society in terms of the racism, but well, it, I, it's on the lower end of that scale. I will say, yeah, I, I would. Say I mean, it, it's there. Yeah. It's it, it's more just the time it's in as opposed to really i mean you know there's no nobody is you know where you know there's no makeup to make other cast members right, right? they right. don't do any of that like the charlie chan films yeah. there's no you know it, so it's just yeah it's just a sign of the times but it you know 83 years later it's a little like <laughs> yeah and i mean if we you don't watch them then we're losing that part of history right. too so right. it's you know right. by looking at this we acknowledge yeah it was like that it, this, that it was like know? this yeah exactly so we're not gonna try and revise yeah. history that it wasn't ever like that but it's like and, and this yeah. is currently streaming <laughs> on uh, classic horror movie channel amazon prime tubi canopy mgm plus and Screenbox. so you should be able to find it and i'm i imagine it's on uh, youtube because I, I think it's nice, probably everywhere. Mm-hmm. You really look hard um, enough. <laughs> all right. So that's it for King of the Zombies. Thanks, Scott. We do have some feedback, but let's uh, let's not run so long as we did last time. <laughs> H-Man. Doc, you want to take uh, the H-Man Gregory Crosby? I do. I do. All right. Gregory Crosby, 3325, says, I haven't seen the H-Man in at least 20 years. And I'm pleased this episode sent me back to it for a rewatch. It's great. 
liquefying fun. <laughs> yes. I've, yeah, I've been, I've long been a fan of Honda's non kaiju films. And while this indeed isn't as truly strange and unsettling as Montango, another favorite, uh, it's deliriously close. Uh, an excellent pick and commentary. Chris, if that is your real name. <laughs> Oh, uh, and one from Mikey Z. Uh, Daphne, would you like to take that? Sure. Uh, Mikey Z writes, great episode, guys. Great pit, Chris, a.k.a. Jose, a.k.a. Mini-Me Jeff. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> job, Chris. Great to hear about your indoctrination into the genre and film in general from such awesome parents. Blob-minded filmmakers were running amok in 58. Chad dodged a bullet on the cabaret scenes. <laughs> so that's so yeah, true. This is a mishmash of genre movie. Honda's PTSD with atomic bomb after effects is on full display here. Great podcast. Chad, get well, buddy. <laughs> Tanglinitis can be cured by having, by having other others acquired her, acquiring herd immunity. Have others participate in that venture. Oh my god, taglinitis. Taglinitis. Oh. Inflammation of the taglines. Mm. <laughs> Appreciate oh, that. And I inspired by this movie, I went and watched The Mysterians. Ah. Ooh. Uh -huh. Ooh, did that's, you now? That's a tough watch. <laughs> I'm trying to find that one. <laughs> it's on the Criterion channel right now. It's a uh, tough watch. Well, know. I'll tell you why. This is like if you think some kaiju <laughs> movies are just all the Japanese army attacking and doing stuff, that's uh -huh. what this is. Uh -huh. uh, and they, oh, we have to come up, we have to do the electronic cannon. We have to, uh, is the electronic cannon ready yet? No. Well, we'll have to do these. Then they use these metal dishes to reflect right. the aliens thing. So, anyway, all the different uh, techniques to yes, fight. Yes. <laughs> there's not a, there's not. A, <laughs> Cool, yeah. <laughs> cool costumes. It's like this is a precursor to all the weird uh, inframans and all that other stuff that uh -huh. the costumes the aliens wear. Anyway, speaking uh, of speaking of costumes, this movie definitely had the '40s pants pulled up real high. <laughs> up, the high pants. Up, yeah. around, up around here, yeah. The belt, yep. the waistline is up high, especially for Mac. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> he did and such short ties you know because yes. <laughs> their, their waistline is so yeah it goes just yeah. to the yeah just to the top of the pants that's all it's about all right if we scroll up a little bit let's do uh episode 159 the manster do you see that scott yep Jose. From Jose, I don't know. From do we Jose. call him Jose still, or do we yes. call him Jose yes. slash Jose. Chris? Yeah, <laughs> that's his that's his pen name uh, forever and ever. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, here you go. This uh, this film is bonkers. I've seen it only <laughs> once in college while I was doing homework one night on TNT's Totally Weird in the early nineties. Gotta love the eye popping out and the convenient <laughs> volcano. Convenient <laughs> volcano. That's the perfect. Creeping Flesh is a favorite Tygon film, and it'd be great to hear your thoughts on that one. I saw that one in middle school, probably 1981, on a Halloween horror marathon. And the shots of the flesh climbing the stairs in the black cloak and hood at the yes. end terrified me. Finally found the Blu-ray, and it's an interesting and hugely enjoyable film. Cheers. I will have to send him an email because we've done that. Done that. I, thought I was going to say, I thought you'd had. So. Yep. Jose. That's when they <gasps> chop off that huge <laughs> finger and put it in the jar and, oh, look how phallic that looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Doc. What? You didn't okay. think that? He always goes there. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> Doc, then if I uh, go up to the next one, episode 158. House of Dracula. House of Dracula, Jose, Jose says. Even as a kid in the 1970s who was hungry for any horror films, I had a hard time getting into the clam bake. Clam bake. <laughs> as, okay, as Karloff called them. Uh, universal <laughs> multi-monster films, classic monsters on their own always held my interest, but my attention wandered with these. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I don't know. The first time I saw that, I was just like, oh, my God. They're all here. They're all I, here. I, I couldn't believe it. Anyway. I think that my, my first film, I can remember, it was, I was very young, was Ivan Costello and Frankenstein. And mm -hmm. that forever has cemented my love for Universal Monsters because they were all there. And then I wanted to watch everything about them from that on. That that was my introduction to yeah, to uh, to uh, the whole thing. That and probably Lou Ab's family and Munsters. Yeah, mixed in. yeah. Uh huh. Well, and the humor that came with it was just really endearing. I felt like so it's easy to to fall in love with with uh, everything about it. Yeah, I think the first movie I went to by myself with other kids was Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Oh, I just saw a thing about that the other day. I was like, oh. Sean Connery. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Going full Irish on that one. So. And Leprechaun <laughs> Comic Relief, yes. Yes. But, all right. Uh, episode 156, I think, uh, Daphne, City of the Dead. The City of the Dead. And this is Jose again. This is a perfect example of a little film that couldn't, that could. It's awfully impressive on the tiny budget, very atmospheric and eerie. I agree it gets a little too deliberate in places, though. I found a DVD of this one years ago, but it didn't look so great. In 2020, I got the corrected Blu-ray. The, the first run had an issue with the transfer, and it does look pretty much flawless. Mm. If all low-budget horror films were as good as this, the genre would have a better name. It's a good movie. It is. It's a good movie. Yeah. One of the best. It is. It is. Uh, episode 155, Scott, it came from outer space. You know, I just put up a marquee of that on uh, Saturday Mad Theater. Yeah, yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> so, Jose says, one of my favorites from the 50s. I was lucky enough to see this in a 3D revival around oh, cool. 2010, mm. and it was a blast, but it was an anaglyph version. The 3D Blu-ray is stunning and has the added benefit of the three-track interlock magnetic stereo sound. I have no idea what any of that means. It's, it's fancy. It's like the interocitor. From, yeah. Like, yeah. It, is. it is. Let's see. The telescope That's scene. That's his on Earth, though. Right? Yeah, it is. So. That telescope scene at the beginning is one of the best pop-outs in any 3d film i've seen what a, what a great film with the eerie desert poetry of alan and arnold with one of the best non-humanoid aliens around yep i agree and doc didn't you watch that in 3d i i have the 3d blue yeah yep yes. i did watch it yeah. and the 3d TV you're talking about the telescope yeah 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 it all was, right well it looks great <laughs> we have like uh, nine more older ones left. Do we want to do them or do you want to save them? Let's do it. Ah, I was going to say, let's save them. Oh, oh, okay. Well, whatever Doc says. That's cool. Doc's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doc's the boss. Okay, we'll stop there. We'll stop with It Came From Outer Space. The boss. Uh, and <laughs> we're saving up Jose to savor him in later episodes. <laughs> But the next one is the Wasp Woman, just to, mm. just to tantalize. And then <laughs> Werewolf. Oh, oh man. Werewolf. Oh, gosh. Il Demonio. So I know what my next pick's got to be now. <laughs> All right. All right. We've already, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so that's it uh, for feedback. We're going to stop there. Uh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, Gregory and Mikey Z and uh, Jose and come on folks don't let them do all the heavy lifting jot down something you thought about the movie or the yeah. podcast or, or whatever yeah. we love or give us recommendations even yeah, yeah. Uh, yes we've actually been known to do them <laughs> yeah uh, you can send feedback list. to feedback <laughs> at gruesomemagazine.com or you can leave comments on Gruza Magazine's YouTube channel uh, Gruesome Magazine's h and DOH podcast Facebook group, or even on the website at gruesomemagazine.com. But please, we love comments. Uh, and please share us with your friends. If you know other uh, horror folks that you know, 
<laughs> Never mind. Anyway, you can have it playing <laughs> in the background while you're doing stuff. You can do all kinds of things. You know, we're we're not your your uh, five minute review podcast. We are the uh, deep dive. We love to sit and uh, you know we would have gone through at least two pitchers if we were sitting down at the bar. I think. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I mean, it does take about an hour and 36 minutes to uh, talk about an hour and six minute film. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I could have so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll focus on a specific film released between 1920 and 1969. Next up, chosen by Daphne. Mm. What are we doing, Daphne? The Snake Girl and the Silver Haired Witch. That one was one I did suggest, actually. That's Is it right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. There you go. So I'm looking forward to that, that one. That's from Dae Studios, mm -hmm. uh, directed by Nor Noriaki Yuasa, one of the creators of Gamera. 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 Yep. So. See, that shows how stupid I am. Whoops. So anyway, what? I didn't know. Why? I thought I never mind. I'm not going to say it. He's not going to say that he thought. I'm not going to say it. Camera I'll tell you was <laughs> uh, um, Anyway, Kaiju, good stuff. And there's some other ones I got to watch. Uh, Jerry Chandler was going to pick some. Die, so they're the big, time, like, uh, time robot. Mushroom? Yes, yes. Um, but we couldn't find them streaming anywhere at the time. That was it's been a few years. Uh, so yeah, that will be cool. And currently, that is on Shutter. Mm -hmm. Um, I hope it stays there. It's yes. interesting. Uh, uh, and this it's interesting is film. a definite tie-in with the. Uh, uh, I think it hit Shutter when the Yokai Monster stuff came out a couple years ago. You know, mm -hmm. when they yeah, re it's re a, those. a black and white film from 1968. Mm -hmm. which is, there's been a few. We know of one, um, but this one. <laughs> It's something that I've I've read about, you know, several times, and I was excited to actually be able to watch it. And you're gonna yeah. like it. You're gonna like yeah. it. Yeah, he loves those yokai. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, this, this, this yokai. <laughs> you're gonna you're, yeah. You're gonna like this. This is gonna be rap mm -hmm. alley. Oh no, I watched it already. I love it. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool, I was yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I was glad to hear that you saw, had seen it too. So, yeah, I, yeah, I watched I it on it. a on a whim. It, it just yeah. showed up. It was on a, some kind of streaming something. I watched it on, and yeah. I was like, okay, I'll watch this. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, I was. It was I, just a throwaway. I was going to turn it on, turn it off, but I just uh -huh. sucked me in until two, two oh. o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I gotta. I hope it ends. Oh wow! I gotta bed. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I think in one of my lists of of. Things that I sent in for request, uh, you know, suggestions for you guys. I think that was on one of them. So. Oh, great! That's so great. So I'm, you know, I, I so I'm definitely looking forward to that one. It's a good. I liked it. So, yay! So. <laughs> I think Brian select uh, Brian Clark, who did the yokai warfare thing with us, also suggested it. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice! At the time, it was one of his cool. options. I think. Um, so now you're making me look. <laughs> He's got to look. <laughs> pulling up, pulling up my master list. Here. <laughs> I don't know if it's streaming on um, something else. If people don't have Shutter, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. He did. <laughs> Another one to cross off. I could cross off King of the Zombies too on our list. So. Yeah. All right, folks. Yak, yak, yak. Dragging on. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Daphne. Thanks so much, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank thank you uh, for putting up with this movie and me. So. <laughs> well, it was a fun movie to talk about. Both were a joy. Both were a joy. Yeah. All right. So catch us again <laughs> here in two weeks with another great horror movie. As only decades of horror can do it. Say hey, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>